here we go. This is day three of my uh, screaming schedule. And yeah, it's <laughs> quite tiring for sure. So, yesterday we were looking at creating a registration screen and today I think we're going to revise that a little bit. So I feel like maybe I will use this stream uh, to work on things um, and maybe it'll be a good place to get feedback as well. So it could be that the uh, game mechanics app that I'm building at the moment, maybe other people apart from myself and game designers Maybe they'll also uh, like to use it um, to play around and give feedback as well. So I'm going to make it a, a little tiny bit more uh, nice. And then we'll see uh, uh, how we go with that. So hoping today to get the rest of registration completed with a slightly different template. Because don't when I look back at it, I don't really like the colours or the template that I picked. And also, uh, I don't like the layout, um, and I like to make it look a little bit nicer, just because, well, it's worth it. <laughs> and on top of that, I think I'd like to add in some password strength checking uh, stuff as well, because that's kind of cool to do. And this stuff probably is reusable, so doing it now means in the future if I need it, um, I can just pick it out. Right, so I've got a cup of tea to keep me going this time. Because, um, yeah, feeling a bit tired. So there are a few bits of artwork which are being worked on, which might be interesting to see. Um, the first sort of major piece uh, coming up is all focused on building in Godot and the game engine will be building an interface uh, for the game. <clears throat> so the first thing we're building is the card pre-sale app but for the initial uh, part of card pre-sale we'll need a way to purchase cards and we'll need a way to look at the cards that you purchased in a sort of collector's view and so the screens for those collectors view and um, main login screens and thing like, things like that uh, are going to be uh, worked on and we'll have various different designs and ideas about what they could look like. Uh, so this is something that the artist has been working on, sort of a very rough uh, design here. Um, so I only got these in just today, um, so I really like getting new artwork in <laughs> and seeing the nice uh, um, transformation of an idea into uh, something amazing. Um, and then other parts of the interface, a few more very basic ideas coming out here, like menu structure and what that might look like. Uh, and lastly, sort of a deck preview. So here we have like different uh, decks available. So again, this is very early stages with the uh, sort of design here. And uh, it's definitely going to change and um, improve and we'll have different ideas coming up. And also we're looking at couple of new cards which are coming up and they're going to be um, in the demon uh, deck and there's going to be a new demon and in the um, uh, undead deck there's going to be uh, a new undead zombie kind of girl so those, uh, those are coming up and that'll be uh, pretty cool so uh, we might have a look at 
a bit more of that stuff a bit later. But uh, since I'm feeling pretty tired today, I think this is going to be a fairly short stream, uh, maybe an hour uh, maximum. We'll see how we go. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to uh, add something to the watcher to pick up changing CSS files. Um, so one of the interesting things about using uh, Bootstrap is it's easy to just drop in new uh, themes and things. So if I don't like the uh, colours, I can just drop in something else. Um, so I think we're going to revamp. First, we're going to revamp the look of the register screen, and then we're going to add some uh, password uh, strength checking uh, logic and a bit more validation. And then we'll move on to uh, login. So I think uh, changing the watcher to pick up more things because at the moment the watcher is only looking for um, mint files. But when I change the uh, CSS files, I want that to be picked up as well. So we'll add here. Source web app and star.css. Okay, so that should auto reload any CSS changes. Uh, just close all of these windows here, I've got quite a lot going on. So, the next interesting thing I don't know what's going on with my mouse here. Maybe it's something to do with the streaming software, but uh, normally when I right click, I get what I want, but recently I haven't got what I want. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Uh, I guess it's uh, some strange uh, configuration or something. Okay, so let's revamp how register looks. So remember last time register looked like this, it doesn't look great. And also, I switched the theme out for a different one because uh, I didn't like the other colours. Not sure yet if I like these colours, um, but we'll keep going with this and see how it looks when it moves on a little bit more. Um, so first I'm going to totally restructure the HTML in the front end. So in the register mint, we've got some... Uh, HTML here, which I typed out, but I am going to ditch this. I think I'll just comment it out. Uh, oh, Mint doesn't like that at the moment. Let's see if a div will make it better. Yes, it will. Okay, great. Uh, so we'll put a div in here. And then we've got a field set. And close the field set. And then we'll put a legend. Yeah. So I think as well when you stream a lot, you have to talk a lot and explain what you're doing. And uh, I guess that takes practice to be able to uh, talk for a long time <laughs> and explain what you're doing as well, because uh, I guess it's uh, different. Different people uh, have different levels of understanding of what's going on. Uh, so right here, I'm just restyling stuff. I'm going to put a title in here, I think. Uh, or maybe I'll just hard code it to... Register. Yeah, I'm just going to hard code it to register. Um, right, now onto the form group things. So I'm in the field set, but outside the legend. So here I'm going to create a div class of a form group. Let's close this div. And then I'm going to create a label and 
this label is going to be for email. I'm going to call it input email. I'm going to close this label. And here I'm going to put a title for it, which is uh, email address. There you go. Okay, now still within this form group, we'll have a uh, input. Now I think I'm going to change the input around a little bit to the one we did before. So. I think we're still going to have an input which is very similar so on input um, yes I think this is going to be the same as this one here Let's copy paste that up here. So on email, input email, type is email, and then the class is form control, placeholders, email address, and auto focus. And I think maybe I'll enforce a max length here as well. I guess that'll do. Okay, let's reformat that. Right, where's my browser window gone? Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so getting there. And I think I made a layout last time, but I haven't really uh, put the correct HTML in the layout. So I think right now there's probably nothing in the layout. Yeah, just a very simple children layout. So I think I will switch this up to have a different kind of a layout here. Yeah, so I'm going to go with a div and then I want to have a main in here. And this main is going to have a row of main. And then we're going to have a uh, class of container. And then we'll put the children inside the main. So that's kind of just housing it in this container here like this. And yeah, that's okay. Now, how do I feel about the color of this? Hmm, let me give it one more go. A different bootstrap theme this one and then we'll just check and see uh, did that change I think it didn't um, well should I go for a dark color or a light color I really don't know Maybe some tea will help me think. Okay. 
I'll stay with the light colour for now, I think. Okay. Let's go back to register. So we have that initial first field in there. And now we're going to add some more bits here. So I think the next uh, thing was the uh, name. So field set, register, form group, email address. Uh, so this whole thing is a form group. So we want another one of those. And this one is going to be input name I'll just write enter name this is on name and actually that's not quite the right place to put it. That should be name. This should be enter name. Yeah, until I'm really feeling tired today. <laughs> it's getting towards the end of the week. And uh, yeah, definitely feeling the tired, tiredness. So this should be input name. This should be text. Um, much sense, all right. Okay, that's good. So now we should have a name here. Yep. Now we need another group like this. Okay, so this is going to be a uh, password. So I'm going to do something slightly different on password. So I want to check the password length. So this will be input uh, password and it'll be on uh, password. This will be password. Um, and I think here we'll split things out a little bit. So this needs to be passwords. I'd like to have like um, a input box with a kind of I symbol on the right hand side. So when you click the I, it shows you the text you've typed. So that way it's easier to see when you're typing the password and the repeat password um, what the uh, that the passwords match basically. Um, I've seen it on a few other sites, so it looks pretty cool. Um, so this is just going to be password. You won't see this uh, very long. Okay, so for this to work, we need to be able to switch the type between text and password. So when someone clicks on the little icon, you'll be able to switch in and out, in and out between the password type. And I think as well, in the, I think we need like an input group um, where the input's going to live. Uh, I'll do password type first, I think, because that's the uh, the next thing so if we go up here and I make a get so in mint a get is just another function um, but it's more like a in the style of a computed function um, so you can just make use of state inside the get uh, so you don't really pass things into the get you use it to operate on state that is set in the component the password type, I'm going to make it a string and then I'm going to say if show password and if we're showing it then we want text, we want the type of the input to be text and if we're not showing it then we want the type of the input to be password. Um, so right now it means we need to show password 
a bit of state so that we can um, turn that between the two different states. So I make another state up here called show password. That's going to be a bool set to false by default. Uh, so now we have password and obviously it's a password so you can't see it. So I think the next thing to do is to put make this like make this password a password group and put the little icon that you can click on that will let you switch between uh, seeing the password and seeing the uh, uh, just the, the uh, stars um, I think I'm going to call it an I the little button that you click on it's going to be called an I it's going to be an I so I think I'm going to need some sort of font thing to get that I to work yeah Um, okay, let's go make the group first then. So here's my form group and here's my password. So instead of just having a plain input as the next thing, uh, we create a form group. So I'm going to put it in a div. And I think the div needs to have a class of input group. And that's going to be maybe three, I think. Uh, that's just the uh, grid sizing. And this div should probably close right at the end of all of the uh, internal parts. So this is my div. Now I need to add an extra thing under here, which is going to be the little i. So I think that is a div with a class of inputs group append, I believe. Um, so that's got to close the div. And then we'll put a span in here. Um, do I want a span here? Yes, I think I do. This span is going to have uh, input group text on it. And this is like a... It's like an, uh, an add-on kind of box. This is like password add-on. I think on the input itself, we can have like an aria um, described by as like a password add-on. Why have I gone suddenly switch case? <laughs> Add on. How about that? That looks better. Password add on. Yeah. Okay, so there's my span which I need to close under here. Right now I need an I. So create another span. And this span is going to have an eye inside it. Often images like little um, images for various different uh, font icons are in the eye tag. Okay, so I want to toggle 
password visibility here. So when you click on the eye, let's give it a class. Right, so I think this is going to have to take a function which uh, does some font awesome stuff. So font awesome FA, and then we'll have a, a password I. So this password I is either going to be an I or an I with a cross through it to show that you're actually um, viewing the password or not. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so get password type. So let's put the I thing here. So get password I and we've got a string here. And so, so if show password then we'll have an i slash uh, else we'll just have an i oh i need to uh, close that uh, too many bits there Oops, wrong one. Right, is it happy? No, it's not happy. Uh, closing tag. F uh, I'm just going to close the tag, but found spam. Okay, I didn't close something somewhere. So, password I. Uh, this is line 159. Uh, spam, 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 spam. Div, div, div. Oh, I didn't close the I, that's why. Right, toggle password visibility. Let's put that up here as well. I think, I don't know if I need to make that a get or a function. We're gonna click on it. So let's make it a function. Okay, it's going to take an event, which is an HTML event. I turn a promise never. Oops, not watching my typing there. Okay, so this is just going to change show password to be not show password. Okay, so that should do it. You all good? Yes. Okay, so in theory now we should see some sort of eye thing here. Okay, so here's the add on. We don't have an eye. I think we're missing some uh, web fonts stuff. So in public, um, I think I need to put some web fonts in there. And I think I have some somewhere. Let's check. Yeah, um, web fonts. Mm. Let's check public web fonts. Yes. So I'm off screen, I'm just copying some web fonts. Uh, into the uh, go mech project into source web app public web fonts uh, here's some web fonts okay let's reload this Uh, that is 
not do anything at all. I still don't have an eye. I wonder what I need extra to go in there. Definitely need some uh, sauce. Actually, maybe the web fonts don't need to go where I thought they went. Hmm. I wonder if this is copying <coughs> the web fonts up here. Yes, it is up here. These are web fonts. Maybe I need to bring them in in the index HTML. Mm, no, I don't really think so. Maybe I need to bring the font, the, yeah, I think I need another CSS file just for the web fonts. I think that's what I'm missing. Let's call it fa.css, fa min.css. And we'll just put this one in here. And then in index, we'll create a new style sheet. And we'll bring in fa min.css. How's that helped? Let's restart this. Yay, we've got an I. So if I type in the password, yes, very good. So my I is working. Um, there's one thing about my eye though, it doesn't have a nice pointer over it all the time. Uh, maybe it's okay. Okay, so I was just missing that. So now I want to do the same thing for repeat password. So that's going to be in register. We'll create this whole form group. Uh, actually, I think I'll reformat first. Have some T. Yeah, so getting there slowly but let's face it everything's slow at late at night after a full day of work so <laughs> it's going to be slow um right where's this div finish down here so let's create another whole block like this so we put the email put the name and now we're on to password, um, repeat password. So, repeat password is identical pretty much, except it's, oh, did I leave input name in here? This really should have been input password. Okay, so on repeat password, input repeat password, this is repeat password type, and this is repeat password, and this is repeat password add-on. 
repeat password add-on. Toggle, repeat password visibility, and then this is going to be the repeat password I. Uh, so just uh, the repeat of these basically. We might be able to optimize these so we just have a single function where you pass the thing that you're interested in. Maybe I should do that. Uh, toggle password visibility. I think this one is show repeat password. Show repeat password. I think that's good enough for that. And then I'd have to change this to a function. This would be um, uh, actually not that one. Sorry. The password i. I change password i to a function. Uh, uh, I think I have the same issue with password type though. Okay, so password i, let's say we pass in uh, a bool. This is going to be um, is visible, which is the bool. And we'll just say is visible here. And we'll change this password i down here to be a function that takes uh, show password, which means that I can reuse this password i over here. This is show repeat password. And I think I can do it here as well. So instead of password type, it's going to take a um, uh, show repeat password. So this will be a function password type will take uh, is visible and this will take is visible. Which means password type in this one will need to take um, show password type and ah oh no sorry this first one is password so show password show password show repeat password. And then on the type, on GP password. Okay, I think that is it. What's the problem here? Um, functions defined as something, something. There's only functions in password I in these components. Okay. Password I. Let's ditch that password I. All good. So now we should see. Yes, and we're actually missing a repeat password. Uh, a form group. Yes, with a label. I just took the inner bits, I think. Uh, I didn't take the whole form group. Let's borrow this. It goes above here, which means that I'm missing span and then three div, two divs and span, and then the form group. Um, hmm. Let's check this. 
stiff foam group goes uh, I see I'm actually inside two foam groups here so this stuff needs to come out of here I believe because this stuff here is just for the first foam group Need to paste the second one in here with uh, three divs. Let's reformat that. One. Right, so now I should see the right thing. Okay, so instead of password, I should say repeat password. Oh, nearly out of T. So now I can hide, I can see it, I can see it, and I can hide it. Okay, email, name, password, uh, this should say repeat password, yeah. And then the last step here is a uh, submit button. And then I like to do a bit more stuff around making um, reporting the errors that are, are happening. So when I get to the bottom of my field sets, I'd like a button. So I'm going to put a button under here. So this button is going to be the submit button. So on click this is going to be now where's my button here oh yes this is the uh, same button actually that we need uh, button primary button block uh, I'm not sure I need the block here. There we go. Email address, name, password, password. Okay, now if I change the password to be pass, pass, now it lets me register. Um, but I want to do more than uh, that because that is still a little bit um, problematic. You don't really want uh, people to get confused about what to enter in here. And also, I definitely don't want just junk. Uh, so the next step is to surface some problems. So the first thing is the passwords don't match. So if I change the password, it doesn't match. Um, I've lost the thing that tells me about the passwords aren't matching. So I'm going to create something that tells me the passwords don't match just at the bottom of this div here, I think. So this is going to be a passwords not match, I'm not matching alert. Right, I think we built that yesterday, um, but I don't remember. Guess what it looks like. Okay, so this thing, I think, let's go find it. Uh, what do we have here? It's a div with an alert. I think that's fine. Maybe I could make the height larger on this div and maybe I don't need a P inside here. Maybe I'll just go straight in and maybe I wrap this with a div. I 
and then I'm going to create something called height, which is going to be a style. It's going to be that's an inline style. That's how you do inline styles in Mint. You um, create a style directive, and then I put them right at the very top. Style height, and we're just going to say here margin top 5px and will that be enough yes that is lovely very nice okay the next step now is to um, do some password strength things I think so in order to do that we want to uh, bring in a password strength thing that can tell us what the password strength is um, JavaScript's got a great one uh, called um, ZX CVBN. I think I'm going to grab that one. Uh, ZXCVBN uh, to projects source web app public. Okay, so I've just put the ZXCVBN uh javascript file here and then in the index we're gonna bring that in as well uh as a script tag i think in the head i think so script script okay so we do source is Z X C V B N J S. Okay, so we shouldn't see any difference here yet because I just brought it in. But now we can do some cool stuff. So let's create some password strength uh, stuff in here. So, first of all, we're going to have a state called password strength. And this is going to be a record. And by default, we're going to have a score of minus one. We're going to have a warning. There's various configurations you can do with, uh, with this. Uh, and you can have some suggestions. <clears throat> so password strength, we're going to need another record up here called password strength. And this record is going to have a score, which will be a number. It'll have a warning, which will be a string. And it'll have suggestions, which will be an array of string and I think we'll need some more stuff to do a score in a minute <clears throat> so let's make a function that gets the password strength I'm going to put it down the bottom here so this will be get password strength and we'll take the password as a string and here we return a result of password strength error and password strength yes yeah, so we need to create a password strength error just to hold the error condition and I'll 
I'll just put it up here as a record. Actually, no, not as a record, as an enum. So password strength dot error. And as enums, only going to have one thing, which is going to be a password strength error. And the password strength error is, I think, just uh, a holder, a holding place for now. Okay, so now I need to drop into some JavaScript. So we'll use the little um, apostrophe things. I don't know what you call them. Um, denote that we are going to drop into JavaScript. So we do that, and then we wrap the whole thing in a function like that, and then we write our code in here. So we will try, we'll catch uh, any error, and then on an error, we'll return a new error, which is going to be, this is some mint stuff here. It's just how you access an enum, uh, password strength underscore error underscore password strength error. That's all we need there. Right, in the try, uh, let's get Z X C V V N. We'll give it the password and then we'll say whatever that was, return a new Okay, so then we'll have a record. So basically, we're just returning the result as uh, an okay. So you can either have uh, a result can be an okay or a result can be an error, and uh, that's a mint built in thing. So, and then a record is uh, in JavaScript a way to create mints records. So we've got a result. We take the score off it, we take the warning off it, which is the result feedback warning, and then we'll get the suggestions. Now, these suggestions uh, are an array feedback suggestions. Okay, that's good. So that should be enough to give us back uh, the various bits of password strength that we need. So now I think we need to figure out where to call this. And I think it's going to be on password. So when you go on password, we'll first uh, try. And here we'll say get me the password, which is the DOM get value um, event target that we had underneath there. And if we've got the password, we want to get the strength, which will be uh, not a button, <laughs> get the function we just wrote, get password strength. And we pass into that the password that we uh, got and that's actually um, going to give us back the strength record. So I can say here then if string is empty, so you give us an empty password, then we will say next uh, password is pass. Then we'll create password strength here. And that's just going to be the default one of uh, score is minus one, uh, warning is empty, and suggestions are empty. So I've used that before. I think I could probably refactor that 
so we just have it in one place. So I'll have a look at that in a sec. Um, else next. So if it's got something in it, then we want to set the password. We also want to set the password strength to be what we got back from from the uh, strength. Right now, if anything goes wrong, okay, so we don't need that anymore. If anything goes wrong in the try block, then we need to catch it. And the thing that we said may go wrong is a password strength error. Like this, the enum. So we take the error off that. And now we need to sequence. Uh, so we do a next. And then we say password strength. And then again, we're using this default thing here. So we could definitely clean that up a bit. Warning and suggestions is empty. Okay, so that's the first part of the sequence. And after we've done the next, then we'll set an error saying password strength checking error. Now, so for set error, we would probably like to put that on a store. So we come back to this. Um, depends where we want to put the error. Maybe just locally will be enough. But we'll do that in a moment. So we're still good here. Let's type a password. Okay, so the other thing we haven't done then is we do need to uh, surface the password strength um, output. So somewhere on the um, password, we need to show the password strength. Uh, which means we need another function which I'm going to put down here called show password strength. That's going to be a bit of HTML. So we'll try here and we'll say give me the strength which is stored in password strength and then we'll say what is the score number to string uh, strength dot score and then we'll say let's move this up a bit um, score is number to string okay and on top of score what else do we need uh, the warning, which will be strength dot warning, uh, we need suggestions, which will be string join uh, of strength suggestions. I mean, we could put them together in another way, but I think just having them separated with a space and a comma uh, is a good first starting point. Right, let's create some score text and we will strength score. So we'll just create a little helper function which will help us to um, make sense of the number that's coming back as the score. So I think I'll put it up here. So I'll have score text. I'll take a score, which is a number. Take score info. And here we'll say case score. 
and if it's zero, we will <coughs> have. See, let's drop this down here so let's make it easier. So we'll have uh, text. This is going to be the worst, and the color for the worst is going to be danger. Okay, and then we're going to need um, more of these. So I think there's four in total, or five if you count zero. So one, two, three, four, five. So that zero has to be one, two, three, four. So that's four records. Uh, so after worst, we've then got bad. Bad's still going to be danger color. And then two is weak. I think for weak we'll have a warning colour and then for three we've got good. Three is good. So good wants a nice success colour. And then four we've got strong which is the best. And I think success is good for that as well. And then lastly uh, if something comes that we don't really know what it is. Actually Another thing as well is we don't need commas between these things. That was just, uh, yeah, okay. This is a case statement. So this will be text is worst and color is danger. Let's. Uh, reformat that if I can. Obviously there's some mistake but it's not reformatting. What's it saying? Uh, get show password strength. Uh, yes. That's not a big S. Text and colour. Right so on zero what's happened here? So case score open the Kelly thing and then we've got zero and the first one text and color and what's it complaining about cannot find record okay so we need a record uh, for score info basically um, so score info is another record up here record score info. So that's going to contain a text of a string and the color another string. Okay, that should make this better. Not quite. What's your problem? Uh, it's, okay, yes, I haven't finished. So we don't yet have the right response coming out of show password strength. Okay, I've done the score text. Um, now I need to say uh, if the strength dot score is minus one. Uh, otherwise, okay, if it's minus one what should we do? Well, we just put an empty div. It's not interesting. It's the default. Right now we'll put, oh, we use this height thing again. That'd be cool. And then close the div. And now we're going to need to put another alert here, which should be a div class of, uh, this'll be alert. Uh, alert and a rating color. Right. So I think in this div we'll put a span. 
So yeah, I'm feeling really tired now. <laughs> Making some mistakes. And here we'll put the uh, strength. Strength and space. After that span, we'll put something strong. Strong. And the strong thing is going to have the rating. Uh, this rating will have some text. Let's put a space here. After the rating, we'll have a warning. Span. Right, I'm going to put the warning in italics. I'll have to create another style there. So that's my italics. And we'll put the warning in here. <clears throat> and then lastly, we'll have another span with italics. Uh, span and in this span we will put some suggestions so we'll just make a space uh, and then put some suggestion suggestions okay so nearly there very very nearly there um, style of italics let's do that next so up here we had the height style let's make a style called italics and this is simply going to be a font style of italic right is this all good oh, it's a long way to the bottom <laughs> No, it's not happy. Uh, just made some 145. I made a line break problem or something like that. 145 span. Span. Right, here's the class. 145 is a span. Oh, yes, I missed the end of this div here. All good. So on password, we've done the setting of the uh, strength. So now we need to use this um, show password strength. And I think it's best place to put it is at the bottom of on password. Show password strength. Where's show password? Uh, on password. So this group is on password. Okay, so I think it could go. Um, just reorder that a little bit to s make it easy to see. So, on the email, finishes there. Uh, input password finishes here. So I think it would go here. Not hundred percent sure how that will look. Let's give it a go. So my password is A. Hey, it's the worst. Add another word or two and common words are better. So let's do root. So that's predictable, such as like at so don't help very much. Yeah, so we're getting pretty good feedback here. So let's try super man. So that's weak. Superman with a special character and some other stuff in there. So if I was to say something like this, this, 
pass is strong. And then we can use the I to see what I've typed. Use the I here as well. And then this pass is strong. That's great. Uh, but now we can register and we can't register now. But what if the password was easy? Like it was just A. Like can register. I think we shouldn't let people register on A. Like on a bad pass, on an easy password. Uh, seems like we should. Yeah, so there's two, two things I have to do uh, before we finish up uh, today. First thing is. I want to put some little checks next to the password and repeat password so you know when you've got it correct. And I also want to put a uh, restrict the registered uh, button so that the strength has to be good or higher. So we'll do the restriction on the uh, button first. So I think we wrote a create button state last time and I think maybe that's not enough though. What else do we need? Yeah, I think the other thing that makes it important is is to check it yes we need to check it so on the create button state down here uh, not that one we should also say um if if the password strength is um if password strength dot score is less than where's the score is less than uh so I think like three and upwards is good. So three and four are good. Anything that's less than three um I think we don't want to uh, allow. Okay, so if the if anything's empty or it's empty or password does not repeat password, um, let's see if I can move this all down here. Yeah. Uh, so or. Password strength is less than three. So what was three again? Three was good. Uh, less than or equal to three. It's probably what I want. Oh, it doesn't like that. That's a number. And oh, score password strength dot score. Very good. Let's see. So, if I was to put password A and A, yes, it's not good. But if I was, I was to put uh, something good, uh, can I register? No, I can't. Why is that? One, two, three. One, two, three. Can I register? Oh, wait there. It's because I haven't filled these bits in. Yes, I can register. So, on strong, I can register, but uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. I can't do it. Uh, actually, I should be able to do it on good. Let's try that again. Um, super. Pass. 
super pass. I can't register. Super pass one two three four five six. Super pass one two three four five six. Yeah, so this uh, this is not quite right. Uh, I think it would be oh right there, this is saying create button state uh password strength or score is is empty will be turned true so is i need to do the opposite thing here then so if it's greater than uh two everything's harder <laughs> you're tired <laughs> I'm not convinced I got that right uh, right super super yeah totally not got that right so is it greater than two yes is it less than two super Super, super sick, sick. That's weak. Uh, sick. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. One, two. One, two. Good. One, one. Yeah. So this should be three. Uh, uh, super sick, super sick, yeah, one, one, okay, that's good, yeah, well, that was a lot harder than it should have been, just because I'm really tired, uh, it's easy to make mistakes, okay, well, I think, um, we didn't really add anything extra in terms of moving on into, you know, with the, um, whole process we kind of refactored the register to make it look nicer and we added some extra functionality uh, because I think I'm going to give this to people uh, so they can uh, have a go at playing with the game mechanics as well and give me feedback um, so even though it's very basic uh, I think it's more presentable and has better features this way so I would like to add some check marks on the side there, but I think we'll do that tomorrow. And also tomorrow we'll uh, get on to login. And after login, then we'll be on to the dashboard. And after the dashboard, we'll be on to um, the first parts of the collector's uh, card generation stuff. So that's the more interesting uh, parts, the game mechanics. But it's, it's coming up. Um, another few nights, I think I'll, I'll be there. Okay, brilliant. Um, I think that's it for me tonight. Um, I was really tired on this uh, segment, so hopefully tomorrow I'll have a bit more sleep and um, more energy. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope you continue to follow my journey as I build this awesome game and improve things on my blockchain. Uh, so thanks very much and good night. <laughs>